Hey beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan and happy Saturday. Happy short story Saturday specifically because today we're going to talk about Bullet in the Brain by Tobias Wolf. Just a weekly reminder that the story is down in the description below. So if you want to just pause this video, take five minutes, go read and experience the story, have your brain dissolved by the amazingness that is the ending, and then come back to this video, I'm not going to be mad. In fact, I would be pleased if you did that because this video is going to contain spoilers and I don't want to ruin in the experience of this story for you. Like, there's nothing worse that I can imagine in my head than ruining this story for you. Actually, this is 2016, the year of terrible things. So maybe it wouldn't be the end of the world, but you should still go read the story before you watch this. Okay, let's do it. Bullet in the Brain was first published in 1995 and then collected in the 1997 collection of Tobias Wolff's called The Night in Question. The short story is indeed pretty short and the plot or the action of the story is even shorter. What we have is a main character named Anders who is a literary critic and just generally a miserable person. And what he does is he goes into into the bank on a normal day only to find out that the bank is getting robbed. That is really all you need to know in terms of plot. This is a kind of majestically and purposefully plotless story. In fact, if you're a reader who is paying attention, you can probably tell that this story is going to end with Anders getting shot in the head after about, mm, let's see, the title, Bullet in the Brain. Just like that, with those four words, we know what's coming. But beyond that, in the first paragraph of the story, we know where and why it's going to happen. It's like a game of Clue, a bullet in the brain at the bank because of a murderous temper. This story is divided into two parts. First part is that Anders pisses off the bank robbers and gets shot in the head. I believe the actual quote is, the man with the pistol raised the pistol and shot Anders right in the head. The first part is all about humor and character development and plot. The second part is really weird and it can be thought about in a lot of different ways. But the way that I wanna think about it today for the purposes of this video is that the second part is an exploration of what is worth writing about. Okay, so for me, with the story Bullet in the Brain by Tobias Wolff, there are two notable, incredibly important things. The first thing is kind of what I mentioned earlier, the way that it is broadcast from the title and the first paragraph alone, exactly what is going to happen in this story. That, in my mind at least, is the first notable thing about Bullet in the Brain by Tobias Wolff. If you take out of the equation, the plot surprises that can happen to a reader. If you take it out of the equation by putting it in the first paragraph, then in what other ways can you surprise us? That's what part two sets out to do. The second notable thing is the more brilliant one, at least in my opinion, and once again, it has to do with the last line of the story. As Anders is dying, the second half of the story kind of goes through this big debate about what Anders could have remembered and what he actually did remember. The list of things that he could have remembered is a big freaking list. And it's a list of things that would normally make for great stories. For instance, my absolute favorite thing that Anders did not remember as he is dying is that his dying mother said of his father, I should have stabbed him in his sleep. What? He also did not remember, quote unquote, the pleasure of giving respect, or when he began to regard the heap of books on his desk with boredom and dread, or when he grew angry at writers for writing them. All of these little details that get thrown at us so quickly that Anders does not remember, each of those is story worthy. They are all brilliant instances of characterization, but for some reason, Anders does not remember them. Okay, so hold on just one second. Let's take a step back. Tobias Wolff is a writer who is arguably the most entrenched in academia, in the MFA and creative writing kind of program. He is currently at Stanford, which is in itself a big deal, but before that, he was actually at Syracuse, teaching and teaching alongside some of the greatest short story writers that we have had in America, and doing all of that inside of a creative writing classroom. It's a thing that you can't help remembering about Tobias Wolff when you read this story, which is as much about Anders as it is about literary criticism. The reason that Anders gets shot is that he is pissed at how cliched the bank robbers talk. He's pissed at how like cliched of a script this whole bank robbery scene is. He is so entrenched in criticism that he can't even put the critic's mind away when he is being held at gunpoint. After Anders gets shot, the story spends two pages talking to us about things that Anders might have remembered, except that he didn't. In fact, I would argue that these things that Anders is not remembering are the kind of details that we would be taught to write about in a creative writing classroom. And maybe that's just because I'm in one of those programs or because Tobias Wolff has spent so much time inside of one, but I can't help but read these two pages as kind of an indictment about what the MFA program would tell you the story is. 
versus what the actual story is. Literary criticism has consumed Anders. It's the only way he can think about the world now. And in fact, I would argue that it's consumed about 95-96% of this story. So, Ryan, what about that other 4%? In the last three paragraphs of Bullet in the Brain, we finally get an explanation of what Anders does remember in his final moments as the bullet destroys his brain. Heat. A baseball field. Yellow grass, the whir of insects, himself leaning against a tree as the boys of the neighborhood gather for a pickup game. What Anders remembers is a baseball game from childhood. But more specifically, what he remembers is how this friend of his named Coyle has a cousin who comes to the game, a person he's never met before and who he will never see again. Coyle's cousin is from Mississippi, and when he's asked what position on the baseball field he wants to play, he answers, shortstop. Short's the best position they is. What happens next is one of my favorite passages in any short story that I've ever read, and it gives me chills almost every time. And that is that Anders goes off to right field, and he starts hitting his fist into his mitt, and he starts repeating to himself this weird turn of phrase. They is. They is. They is. And that is how the story, and also arguably Anders' life, ends with this little weird repetition of two words that shouldn't quite go together but make a weird kind of music when they do. They is. They is. They is. What's happened here in this last paragraph, which is maybe my favorite paragraph in all of fiction and which I'm going to read for you after the end screen, is that Anders has kind of returned just for a moment, to his childhood love of the way that language works. This is possibly the most characterizing moment in all of Anders' life. Supposedly it's the reason that he went on to start loving books and then to try and seek out a job in which he could work with them. Even though that's all gone wrong, this is the moment where Anders maybe fell in love for just a second. And even bigger than the character, if that's at all possible, this is also the most anti-MFA moment in the entire story. This is the moment where all of those other stories that you could have told have fallen away. And all that's left is a kind of childlike, magical love for the way that language works. They is, they is, they is. Alrighty, that is really all that I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed bullet in the brain. Again, this was a short one, so this would be a great one to catch up on. I would love to hear what you guys thought about the story down below in the comments. I will say that next Saturday we are going to be reading a very classic short story that's taught in a lot of classrooms. It's The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I'll include a link to that one down below as well. Have fun reading about the craziness that happens in that story, and I will see you guys on Monday with a book review of Once a Runner by John L. Parker Jr. Until then, I hope that you guys have a great weekend, and best wishes! Hey, beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan, and today we are going to be talking about the short story Sweat by Zora Neale Hurston for this next installment of Short Story Saturday. The bullet is already in the brain. It won't be outrun forever or charmed to a halt. In the end, it will do its work and leave the troubled skull behind, dragging its comet's tail of memory and hope and talent and love into the marble hall of commerce. That can't be helped. But for now, Anders can still make time. Time for the shadows to lengthen on the grass. Time for the tethered dog to bark at the flying ball. Time for the boy in right field to smack his sweat-blackened mitt and softly chant, They is. They is. They is. <sighs> Chills. Ugh.